Welcome back. Last time we took the Maglav car to a second island. This second island is called Village Island. Some people also call it Jungle Island, but I prefer to call it Village Island. So let's explore this island. Although fairly common now, this kind of realistic texture look was really something that was not seen in computer graphics in video games before this this game. Here we find in the rock wall some sort of a wooden ball with an eye on it. You click that it moves. And there's two things we want to uh, note about that. One thing is this symbol which is on the back and the sound it makes, sort of a chirping sound. Now this um, ball puzzle actually has two possible solutions uh, or two ways to get to the solution. The most common one is by sound association, that's the one everyone knows, but there's actually a much easier solution which works for uh, four out of five balls. That is, if you're in the cave here and look back, you see that the cave entrance sort of looks like a frog. And the eyeball appears exactly where the eye of the frog would be. So, we could uh, assume then that whatever animal should be associated with this ball is a frog and that whatever makes that sound we just heard is also a frog. Of course at this point we haven't actually seen the symbols we're looking for yet. If you're playing this game for the first time you'd probably not notice this, at, uh, this yet. In fact I never noticed uh, the fact that you could see these shapes with the with the eyeballs. I had to read about that much later. There's one which you have to solve with the shape. So obviously I, uh, I use it there, but I didn't know you could do it with the other ones as well. It's fantastic graphics here. I really like the look of uh, Village Island. Over there we see the Dome Island. You can hear the creaking of the wooden bridge. Fantastic attention to detail that this uh, this game has. It's probably not that visible, but you can actually see uh, insects flying around in here as well. Another island we can see back there, which we'll undoubtedly visit at some point. There's another insect going down the bottom of the screen. Okay, so what is this? It appears to be a tree garden, except all the trees have been cut down. And why could that be? Of course, if you've been paying attention, you know the answer to that. Ken is making books. And what do you need to make books? Paper. And what do you need to make paper? Trees. So these trees have been cut down to make paper. Here we see uh, an axe. This kind of axe you really wouldn't be able to cut a tree that's this big uh, down with, with just an axe. But if you look closely it's hard to see even in the game so it's going to be pretty impossible to see on YouTube I guess. The, um, there's a handle lying here and uh, sort of a wire going across the top of the tree. I guess that's a saw they use to saw down these big trees. Well, there's a gate here, and on the gate is a beetle. These are the beetles that give the ink. Oh, and it flies away. The sound of the beetle is an important clue. If you didn't hear it, it's not that uh, that much of a problem because these beetles are really plentiful, they're constantly flying around here in this uh, garden. Well, if we look here, 
uh, we see here the trees are still there, but they've all been stripped of their bark. So apparently Gen, for some reason, didn't want to cut down all these trees. But he still used their bark for the for making paper. We could see that in one of the religious is in the rotating room but earlier. We saw this tree with its bark stripped off and paper, paper falling off of it. Apparently it's not really healthy for these trees because look at these leaves, they're all brown. Over there we see what looks like the handle of a big dagger again. You can hear some insects. And there goes another one of those beetles. I always get lost here, <laughs> so excuse me. The I can never f remember how to get to the dagger. All right, it's over here, right? Um. Okay. So if we go down here. We get to the base of this giant dagger. There's another one of these eyeballs. Again, make note of the symbol and the sound. And this is the only eyeball where you cannot see a shape near it. Apparently, the designers felt that it would be too easy if the if you could see the shape with all of them, and they were wrong because this puzzle is really, really hard. But it is sort of nice in a way, because there's one eyeball that you have to solve with sound, which is this one, and one eyeball that you have to solve with uh, the image. Okay, let's move on. There's actually... Oh, there was another beetle. Here we see a chasm with apparently lava down. It can't be good for an island to have a lava pit right in the middle of it. It's another sign of the instability of Riven. Here we see these flowers that were uh, part of the work offering in the temple. Okay, well that's enough of that. Let's go this way. Mushrooms. I think the these look like fireflies or something. Well, you can say a lot about this game, but not that you don't get enough chances to hear the beetle. Okay, we go down here. And we see it looks like a big wooden wark. Now I've already told you that the villagers fear uh, the wark. And they worship it. So obviously... Having a big statue of a wark here would be a really good way to ensure that the villagers wouldn't come near it. So what better place to hide something like a secret door? I mean, even if a villager would by accident discover that you could open this, there is no way they'd ever go into the mouth or a wark, even if it's made of wood. But we don't have any of those superstitions, so we can do it. Now, we're in sort of uh, inside sort of an elevator. This lever controls the elevator. And this button would suggest the presence of a maglev, and there is actually a maglev, and it's um, down. If you go down with the elevator, you can go both up and down. But we're not going to use that maglev just yet. So we'll go up. Okay, second floor. And we'll investigate the second floor in the next video.